Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi wa bi dharika fal yafrahu. He says, say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by extension to all of us, for the sake of the fadl of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for the sake of his mercy, let them rejoice. And Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, who is Turjaman al Quran, right? He is the exegete of the Quran, the one upon whose chest the Prophet placed his blessed hand and made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give him fiqh, to give him a deep understanding of the religion, and to teach him the ta'wil of the Quran, the interpretation of the Quran. This is Ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu. And he said here, Fadl in this ayah, this is Surah Yunus, verse 57 or 58. It says, Fadl means ilm, sacred knowledge. For the sake of sacred knowledge, let them rejoice. And then Rahmah, Rahmah here means Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For the sake of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let them rejoice. So inshallah ta'ala, this is, this is what we're doing here. We're combining both of them, right? We come here to gain sacred knowledge of the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Habibullah. Blessed, the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the evidences are, they're overwhelming. And we pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, guide our friends and our neighbors who are non-Muslim, and those of us who are Muslim to keep us strong on the, on the path is backed with istiqama. The evidences are, are many, many. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا لِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولُهُ بِهُدَى وَدِينِ الْحَقِّ لِيُذْكِرَهُ عَلَى دِينِ كُلِّهِ وَلَا كَرِيَهُ الشُّكُونَ Sadaq Allah. It is He who has sent His Messenger with guidance. And the deen al-haq, the, the religion of truth. Who is al-haq? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it may supersede all other religions. Even though the mushrikeen may detest it. This is absolutely true. If you look at what's happening in the world right now, you have these proponents uh, of weird philosophies, of this kind of postmodern madness, the current zeitgeist. Imagine they're, they have these swords or machetes of kufur, and they're slashing through this jungle of religion. There goes Christianity. There's Judaism. There's Hinduism. Goodbye, Buddhism. And they come up to a wall. And they can't do anything. Because this wall is called Al Islam. Islam will remain because it is deed and haq. Right? But not Muslimin. We have to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us on the path. Right? Even though those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may detest it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhadina amun, may yabtadda mitkum andini. O oh, you who believe, should one of you turn away from his religion, right? Ritta, apostate from the religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, then will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring a people, qawmin, and this is nakira, right? And the nakira in Quranic Arabic, the indefinite uh, noun in Quranic Arabic, in Quranic Arabic, means something that is beyond imagination. It is emphatic to the utmost, beyond your frames of reference, right? This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the Prophet sallallahu in the Quran using indefinite nouns. Ya ayyuhal nabiyyu, inna arsalnaka shahidan, wa mubashiran, wa nadheeran, wa da'iyan in Allahi, bi idhnihi wa silajan wa niyara. Lam yakun al-lazina kafru min ahli kitabi wa mushrikina munfakina hatta ta'yihum al-bayyina rasulun min Allahi. Ya tuhu shafafan mutahara. Such a messenger. What an incredible messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring an incredible people. How does he describe these people? How does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describe these people? You hibbuhu wa you hibbunahu. You hibbuhu wa you hibbunahu. That uh, he loves them and they love him. This is their first sifa. It's about hub. And some of the theologians, they found this problematic. You know, Allah loves us, we love Him. Is this really what it means? They said, no, it doesn't mean this. It means something else. It, it means, uh, He loves them, means He rewards them. This means they obey Him. But Imam al says, that's not what it means. <laughs> so you got the order wrong. 
The reward is before they get to back. How does that work? That's in like the ayah, the the city of the Russian. What can prove to protect Allah? Fifth city, only your fifth one. Say, if you love Allah, follow me, then Allah will love you. So here you hibbu whom wa you hibbunahu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves them first. And they love him. So this is in reality. Bid al What does this mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose to love them, chose to guide them in his irada, bid azal, in his pre-eternal will. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in his infinite knowledge, chose them. He loves them and they love him. They're lowly, they're humble with the believers. And they have Issa. Or the Kufar, they see them as formidable. These people are no joke. When the Kufar look at these this poem, this incredible people that are inundated with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they start shaking. They have Issa. Yujahidun fi sabilillah. They strive in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They strive against, essentially, the Prophet sallallahu defined what the mujahid is. And jihad takes many forms. Essentially, he said, al-mujahidun majahada nafsahu fi ta'atillah. The true mujahid, the quintessential mujahid, is the one who strives against his lower self in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yujahidun fi sabilillah. Wala yaqafuna lawma talayin. And they, they are not afraid of people who reproach them for their religion. They don't care what people think about them because they hold certain beliefs. They have istiqamah in the religion. This is the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He bestows on you, on these people, on this poem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, What a la kafikra. Sadaq Allah, this is Prophet. What was this ayah revealed in Mecca? There were a few dozen believers. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet, We have exalted your name, your remembrance. It's the most popular name in the world. The name Muhammad, the name of the Prophet Muhammad, is the most popular name in the world. Literally, his name is raised. Right now, somebody's making Aban, someone's making Ibama, someone is saying, I just said it. This is going on 24-7 until the Sa'ah. How is this not obvious? How is this not just a proof? His name is a proof. The Quran is saying this 1400 years ago. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you are in doubt as to what we read, what we reveal to our servant from time to time, then produce one surah like unto this Quran, one surah. And call for your aid, anyone whom you will. This is revealed 1400 years ago. There were a few hundred, a few thousand believers. Today there's nothing like the Quran. There's nothing in the same ballpark as the Quran. The Quran is predicting that no book in Arabic will be even near the style and eloquence of the Quran. This is a prophecy. There's nothing close to it. This is completely obvious. And if you cannot do this, and you will not do this, then fear the fire. There's some Christian Arabs who wrote something al Quran al It's a totally joke. Ivy League professors working on this thing. Half of it's plagiarized from the Quran. And then this poor Hussein who wrote this as Arab Christian, he got in trouble with the uh, IRS. He tried to burn some documents in a dumpster fire, and the fire caught onto his apartment building. This irony, Fatahullah. He's put in, he said, he, he was tribulated with a fire in this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will save him from the Nar, Jahannam. We pray for people's guidance. We pray for people's guidance. You know. So these are clear, clear Dali. Right? It's, it's amazing. And in the Quran, there's a very short surah. Everybody knows it. But have we really thought about this? There's a surah in the Quran, which is basically our belief about the Prophet in a nutshell. Three verses long, it's called al kufa If you understand this surah, you have a very good grasp of our prophetology. Just like ikhlas, four ayat. And there's a secret why we learn these suwar when we're children. We memorize them. If we uh, 
appropriate the meanings, assimilate the meanings, I don't know the proper word, assimilate the meanings of ikhlas, we will have a very good conception of our theology, theology in brief. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? In Al-Kawfar, inna a'tina ka'kawfar, fasalli li rabbika wanhaw, inna shani akahu al Indeed, we have gifted you kawfar. When was this ayah revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa It was revealed upon the death of his son, Abdullah, Allah anhu. And the mushrikeen were literally laughing at him. You have to understand this. What kind of tribulations the Prophet sallallahu had to endure? Can you imagine your child dies and you can hear your neighbors next to you laughing, celebrating? Abu Lahab lived right next to him. You can hear them when they were lamenting, they start laughing. They go out into the streets. But Hujira Muhammad, they're saying, Muhammad has been cut off. Right? Because they have a very low, these mushrikeen have a very low opinion of women. Right? So then who, who's going to spread your religion now? You don't have any sons. Right? Who's going to spread your name around? al asim Nawaid and Abu Lahab, they're saying to him, who's going to, your name is not going to be remembered anymore. Right? How wrong can you be? No one will remember your name after you. This is what they're saying to him. Inna a'atayna kalakawtha. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was commenting. His head was down. He looked up and there was a smile on his face. And he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed three ayat, ten kalimat, a surah of kawthar to me. And he smiled, a surah of consolation. Indeed, we have gifted you. The a'atah means a gift. We have gifted you al-kawthar. This is a apatla yamana. In other words, this is the only occurrence of this word in the Quran. Nowhere else in the Quran. What does it mean? They're laughing at my terminology. They tune as soon as they're used to my weird. Anyway, what does it mean? So the Prophet said in a hadith, Nahru fi Jannah, this is a river in paradise. But that's not all it means. This is Tawfa, which is a mubalah uh, form. It's an emphatic form of Kathir, because the wow is stronger than the Ya in Arabic. And abundance. So they say, yes, this means a river in paradise. It also means the Shafa'ah on the Yom Al Qiyamah. It also means that he is Habib Allah, the Mahabba of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means many things. It means the promise of Jannah. And if we look at the surah, the structure of the surah, right? Because this whole surah, this is something that goes way past, way past us sometimes. That there's a deep structure to these surah. This surah is a kayas, it's like a circle. It's called concentric composition. In other words, the last word of the first ayah is an antonym. It's antithetical to the last, to the last word of the third ayah. In other words, al kawthar and al abtar are opposites. The one who hates you, he is cut off. The one who hates you, al Asim ibn Wa'il, Abu Lahab, what are the names of their sons? We know Amr ibn al-As, he's the son of al Asim ibn Wa'il. Right? But the only, the, only, the only occasion in which we remember his father's name is when we're saying radiallahu anhu about his son who became a follower of the man that his father hated. That's the only case remember his name. Who are the sons of Abu Lahab? Who knows? They're cut off. So then one of the meanings of Kalfa is what? Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. That from her is going to be an incredible fountain. From her there's going to be Sadat of Ahl al-Bayt, the family of the Prophet ﷺ. This is from his Masaris. The Ahl al-Bayt is from his daughter. His daughter, Fatima al-Zahra, alayhi salam. And this is not, you know, some Shia tafsir. This is the tafsir al al wa jamaah And it's totally in line with the Salaf al of the Ayah and the internal composition of the Surah. That this was his daughter. And the Prophet ﷺ had incredible love or say the Fatima. Our mother Aisha, radiallahu anha, another incredible woman, one of seven or eight Sahaba that was a mufti. She's incredible, another fountain of knowledge. She said, Ma ra'aytu ahadan kana ashbaha kana ashbaha samtan wa hadyan in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Fatima al-Zahra karam allahu wajhaha This is from our mother Aisha, radiallahu anha. I never saw anyone resemble more closely the sort of mannerisms of the Prophet Muhammad 
than his daughter Fatima Zahra alayhi salam. In other words, if you met with Fatima Zahra, after 10 minutes of interacting with her, you say, I, I completely see the Prophet in her mannerisms. SubhanAllah. And when and Fatima is called, one of her names is, is Ummu Abiha, the, fa the mother of her father. Why? Because when Khadija al-Kubra, radiallahu anha, when she passed away, it was just Fatima and the Prophet them in the house. His three older daughters were married off. And she would take care of him as if as if she was his mother. And she'd be cooking and taking care of things in the house for him and defending him. Defending him. And the Prophet ﷺ were told this is in Bukhari and, and other multiple narrations that he went to the Masjid al Haram and he's praying. And there's a group of the Mustahzi'un. Right? These are people who used to mock and ridicule the Prophet, their ringleader, Abu Jahad. And he said to his cronies, who's going to take these intestines of this camel and this camel uterus and all these internal organs with this blood and throw it on his back while he's in such death? And this takes like a hundred pounds. And a few of them raised their hand. So they wait till he's in such death and they threw it on his back. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, I was there, but I froze. I should have done something. I wish I had a band of men with me. But he froze. And he put this thing on his back. And then some of the boys that were there, they went to the Prophet's house. And they told Fatima Zahra, Wahia Jariya. And she was six or seven or eight years old. And she comes running to Masjid al Haram. And she starts removing this thing from the back of the Prophet. And she starts crying. And the Prophet finishes his prayer and he looks at his daughter. Right? And this was his darling. Right? Fatima to Fatima is like a piece of my body. This is his beloved. This is like his heart, the apple of his eye. And tears are streaming down her face. And he says, Don't cry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will defend your father. And then Abdullah bin Mas'ud he said. He said, And when he said this, these is Mustahzimun, they started laughing to the point where they were falling over each other. Some of you laughing so hard sometimes you can't even stand. They're falling over each other. And I, I told this anecdote to the, the, the brothers and sisters the other day. I said, You want to see a mild mannered man become a lion? Right? You want to feel the wrath of a man? A, a rajul, a real man. I don't know about today. You got men breastfeeding, <laughs> sorry, chest feeding. We have to use the PC language. You have men who don't work. You know, you have men doing, oh, I don't know. You know, I'm talking about a rajul. You want to, you want to feel the, the, the fury of a real man? Mess with this little girl. Mess, mess with this little girl. Right? And the Prophet said that he wouldn't curse people except on rare occasion. But they're laughing at his daughter. He raised his hand, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma alayka bi abi jahlin wa alayka bi utba wa shayba. Do not breach ajab with the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or his family. Urquhu Muhammadan fi ahli bayhi. Who said this? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. The namesake of this masjid. Be extremely vigilant with respect to the Prophet and his family. And so Ibn Mas'ud, he said that they suddenly stopped laughing. The Prophet Habibullah in Masjid al-Haram has raised his hands and made dua. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, Wallahi, on the day of Ghazwat Badr, all seven of these guys, I saw them slain by our swords, lying in the Qadib in the pit. Don't reach Adam with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Don't sit with people. Don't entertain people. Don't platform people. Or Mustahzimun. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, we will take care of these people. Hold firm to your religion. This is extremely important. That we pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that we have istihama in the religion. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala grant us istihama. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala Give us the tawfiq to take the advice of the Prophet ﷺ. When he told one of his companions, Qul, amantu billah Say, I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I stand firmly upon that. 
And then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to take the advice of the Prophet who told one of his companions, Say the truth, even if it's bitter, and don't be afraid of those who find fault with you because of your religion.